Australia's defense landscape is undergoing a profound transformation, one that could redefine its place in the Indo-Pacific security order. For decades, Canberra relied on imported weapons, limited strike range, and a defensive posture centered on continental protection. But with the launch of the Guided Weapons and Explosive Ordnance Enterprise, known as GWEO, Australia is turning from a passive buyer into an active builder of long-range deterrence. This initiative, supported by the United States through the October 2025 Joint Statement of Intent, represents the country's most significant strategic shift since the signing of AUKUS. At its core, the missile revolution is not just about acquiring new hardware, it is about reshaping national sovereignty and industrial capability. The GWEO is the direct response to lessons drawn from the Defense Strategic Review of 2023, which identified a deterrence gap between 2027 and 2032. Australia realized that in the event of a major regional conflict, it could run out of precision munitions within weeks and would depend entirely on overstretched supply chains from the United States and Europe. The war in Ukraine reinforced this vulnerability. GWEO's mission is to close that gap by building a domestic missile production base that can design, assemble, and sustain advanced guided weapons locally. The enterprise is led by Lockheed Martin Australia and Raytheon Australia, two defense giants tasked with transferring technology and training local engineers. The government has committed around 21 billion Australian dollars over the next decade to build this sovereign capability. Facilities are being established in Avalon, Victoria, and Western Sydney, with supporting test ranges in South Australia and Western Australia. Defense Minister Richard Marles described the program succinctly. Australia must be able to build the weapons it fires. Behind this sentence lies a deep strategic realization. Control over ammunition production equals control over national security. At the operational level, GWEO integrates with multiple acquisition programs already underway. Australia's purchase of the High Mobility Artillery Rocket System, known as HIMARS, valued at approximately 705 million United States dollars, provides the delivery platform for guided rockets such as the GM LARS and the Longer Range Precision Strike Missile, or PRSM. Additional acquisitions include the Joint Air-to-Surface Standoff Missile Extended Range and the AM120D-3 Air-to-Air Missile, forming a network of strike options from land, sea, and air. The first phase of GWEO focuses on co-producing these systems domestically, while the second phase expands into indigenous design and innovation, linked closely to AUKUS Pillar 2 initiatives on artificial intelligence, cyber systems, and advanced sensing. In practical terms, this gives the Australian Defence Force a layered strike capability extending from 80 kilometres with the GMLRS to more than 500 kilometres with the PRESM and potentially over 1,000 kilometres with the JASM ER. From launch points in northern Australia, these ranges can cover critical maritime choke points stretching to the Timor Sea, the South China Sea, and even beyond. Combined with reconnaissance from MQ-4C Triton drones and the AUKUS satellite network, Australia is building the ability to detect, decide, and deliver strikes across a vast theater. Strategically, this represents a shift from a defense of the continent doctrine to a deterrence by denial posture, enabling Canberra to project power without needing to deploy large forces overseas. Yet the missile revolution is not purely military. It is industrial and technological at its foundation. Previously, up to 80% of Australia's munitions and spare parts were imported. GO's aim is to reverse that ratio by creating a resilient dual supply chain that can function even if global logistics falter. The enterprise will generate more than 4,000 domestic jobs, attract new research talent, and nurture partnerships with the Defense Science and Technology Group and the University of Adelaide.
The long-term ambition is to ensure that by the mid-2030s, Australia can produce, maintain and upgrade its own guided weapons without relying on foreign assembly lines. The regional context amplifies the urgency of this transformation. China's People's Liberation Army has expanded its missile arsenal dramatically, fielding weapons such as the DF-26 and YJ-21, which threaten bases and sea lanes extending to northern Australia. Canberra's answer is to deepen its strategic depth, strengthening bases in Darwin, Tyndall, and Curtin, while tightening operational cooperation with allies like the Philippines, Japan, and the United States. Through these partnerships, Australia is integrating itself into a network of deterrence stretching from the eastern Indian Ocean to the western Pacific. Should a crisis erupt in the South China Sea or the Taiwan Strait, the Australian Defence Force could employ long-range precision fires directly from its own territory, supporting coalition operations without exposing forward deployed troops. This posture does not aim to provoke confrontation. Rather, it is designed to prevent miscalculation. Deterrence, in Canberra's view, is about convincing potential adversaries that the cost of aggression would far outweigh any gain. By investing in GUO, Australia joins the small circle of nations capable of producing advanced guided weapons, placing itself among the top 10 global defense industrial powers. The strategic payoff is autonomy, the freedom to act, sustain, and defend national interests independently, even in a crisis where supply lines are contested. Still, the challenges are immense. Building a missile industry from scratch requires complex technology transfers, skilled labor, and a stable flow of materials, such as propellants, guidance systems, and warheads. The projected cost of the overall missile and strike program exceeds 74 billion Australian dollars over 15 years, more than the entire Hunter-class frigate budget. Delays and cost overruns are possible, particularly if Australia struggles to source critical components or maintain the pace of training and certification. However, the government views these costs as investments in resilience rather than expenses. Every dollar spent domestically circulates back into industrial growth, research, and skilled employment, anchoring the broader vision of a sovereign defense economy. Over time, the benefits could extend beyond missiles. The GWEO model provides a blueprint for future projects in unmanned systems, space surveillance, and hypersonic research. Integration with AUKUS Pillar Two will connect Australia's labs and industries into a transnational ecosystem of innovation, sharing data, algorithms, and design pipelines with British and American partners. By the early 2030s, Canberra aims to produce not just the weapons of today, but the technologies of tomorrow, missiles guided by artificial intelligence, modular payloads, and quantum-secured targeting networks. In essence, this is Australia's strategic rebirth. The missile revolution marks the moment when a middle power decides to take ownership of its deterrence, not through rhetoric, but through capacity. As one senior defense planner described it, you can't deter with PowerPoint, you deter with production lines. The guided weapons and explosive ordnance enterprise is precisely that, a production line for sovereignty. For allies, GWEO signals that Australia is ready to carry a larger share of collective defense. For potential adversaries, it sends a clear message that the country is no longer a soft target, but a credible force capable of precision retaliation. For the Australian people, it redefines national security from an abstract policy into an industrial reality that creates jobs, technology, and stability. This missile revolution is not about aggression. It is about assurance, ensuring that Australia's voice, territory, and choices remain its own in a turbulent century. AUKUS provided the alliance framework. GWEO gives it substance. In an age where precision means power, Canberra is learning to build both. 
And perhaps that is the quiet lesson behind this transformation. Deterrence is not about shouting louder. It is about building smarter.